Hello my dear children, how are you? I hope you are doing well and also you are enjoying the learning and I heartily welcome you all for the Samveda e-learning classes. My dears, I had given many informations in last three sessions about light reflection and refraction. Today I am going to give you much more detailed informations regarding the lesson and I request you to note down the important points. Before going to learn today's concepts, let us recall what we have learnt in the previous session. My dears, in the last class we have learnt the following important points that is refraction of light how the refraction is going to be takes place when ray of light travel from one medium to another medium and also we have learnt about refraction of light through rectangular glass slab. After that, so we have discussed about the loss of refraction. There are two laws under the loss of refraction. You have learnt the statement of the law and you have understood very well and we also learnt about refractive index and absolute refractive index and finally, we have learnt about spherical lenses. My dears, there are much more important aspects of this lesson today and you are going to learn about refraction in spherical lenses and ray diagram for the formation of images by lens, sign convention for spherical lenses for both concave as well as convex lens. And finally, you are going to learn about the lens formula, the meaning of the term used in lens formula and the meaning of magnification and the formula used to calculate the magnification. Let us understand how the image is going to be formed in case of convex as well as concave lens and also let us learn about image formation in lenses using ray diagrams. Before going to learn this, let us understand how the ray of light is going to be refracted in case of convex as well as concave lens. The ray of light which is passing through the lens behaves differently depending upon the how it is going to be enter into the lens. The first important thing is a ray of light from the object parallel to the principal axis after refraction from a convex lens passes through the principal focus on other side of the lens. That means, when the ray of light which is passes parallelly with the principal axis and which is passing through the lens that is convex lens, after refraction it passes through the principal focus in another side of the lens. In case of concave lens, the ray of light appears to diverge from the principal focus located side of the lens. So, that is when the ray of light which is passes parallel with the principal axis after refraction it is going to be diverged and the diverged ray is appears to be emerged from the principal focus. And the third important point is a ray of light passing through the principal focus after refraction from a convex lens will emerge parallel with the principal axis. It is just quite reverse with the first point. So, that is when the ray of light passes through the principal focus obliquely, then after refraction it moves parallel with the principal axis. If it is parallel with the principal axis, after refraction it passes through the principal focus, it is just quite opposite to the first property. The, uh, the fourth property is a ray of light appearing to meet at the principal focus of a concave lens after refraction will emerge parallel to the principal axis. So, that means, 
So, if it is appears to be directed towards the principal focus, after refraction it moves parallel with the principal axis. This is what you have to know. It is very useful in drawing ray diagram with respect to the concave lens as well as convex lens. The next important point is a ray of light passing through the optic center of a convex lens will emerge without any deviation. That means, if it is passes through optic center and there is no deviation or there is no refraction of the ray of light, you have to understand this. Apart from this, if the ray of light passes anywhere uh, in the convex lens, it is going to be refracted, it is going to be bent according to the incident ray. In case of concave lens, a ray of light passing through the optic center of a concave lens will emerge without any deviation. Here also we can notice the same what we have noticed in case of convex lens. In case of concave lens also, if the ray of light passing through the optic center, it will do not deviate it or diverged or uh, it is not undergoes refraction, it passes straight. And let us learn the image formation in case of convex lens using ray diagram. If you are going to conduct experiment with the help of a screen, a convex lens, a candle and we are going to place the object at different distances what you are seeing like this, we are going to get the image in other side of the lens on the screen and the image size is going to be vary with respect to the object distance or object position. So, we can test this geometrically by drawing ray diagram. Let us learn one by one where we are going to place the object, how we are going to get the images and what will be the nature and position of the image. When the object is placed at infinity, that means which is far away from the convex lens, what happens? The ray of light coming from the object will reaches the lens and after refraction, the refracted ray which is going to be converged at a point what we call at principal focus and here we can notice the nature of the image like this, nature, position as well as relative size of the image like this. The image position is at f. The image is going to be formed at the principal focus on other side of the lens. What about the relative size? The relative size is highly diminished and here in this case nature of the image is real and inverted. So, just recall it again, when the object is placed at infinity, the image position is at principal focus, the size of the image is highly diminished and nature of the image is real and inverted. You have to note this point. I am showing you again, see the animation and recall the points which related to the object is at infinity. Now, come to the next uh, position that is beyond 2 f 1. If the object is placed beyond 2 f 1, here f 1 and 2 f 1 you are seeing there. If the object is going to place beyond the 2 f 1, the ray of light which is going to be travel parallel with the principal axis, after refraction like this, the image is going to be formed between f 2 and 2 f 2 on the other side of the lens. See here, just to compare the height of the object as well as the height of the image. The image nature is inverted and it is a little bit smaller in size at that is diminished when compared to the height of the object and the position is, it is known to you, it is between f 2 and 2 f 2. The nature and position and relative size of the image we can list like this. The image position is between f 2 and 2 f 2, 
the relative size is diminished and nature of the image is real and inverted. I am showing you again, see the animation, just recall the nature of the image which is going to be formed when the object is placed beyond 2 f 1. So, like this image is going to be formed. Then what happens if you place at 2 f 1? If you are going to place the object at 2 f 1, that is double the focal length of the lens. Here f 1 distance between f 1 and o will be the focal length and distance between f 1 and 2 f 2 is as same as the distance between f 1 and o, that is it is 2 f 1 means it is double the focal length. Here also f 2 indicate the focal length between o and f 2 and f 2 indicate double the focal length. So, when the object is placed at 2 f 1, the refracted ray which travels like this and th they are going to meet at 2 f 2 where the image is going to be formed. The image is going to be formed at 2 f 2, then compare the height of the image with respect to the height of the object. Here both heights are same, so we can list the nature, position and relative size of the image like this, image position is at 2 f 2, relative size is as same as the object size. In this case also, real and inverted image is going to be formed. I am showing you the animation again. So, just remember how the image is going to be formed and its nature. Now, what happens when object is placed between 2 f 1 and f 1. Here before we have placed at 2 f 1, now we are placing between 2 f 1 and f 1. So, if the object is placed between 2 f 1 and f 1, the ray of light from the object which is going to be travel and refracted from the lens and refracted ray which is going to be meet that is at beyond 2 f and here just compare the height of the image as well as the height of the object, here height of the image is appearing bigger than height of the object. That means, we can list the nature, position and relative size of the image like this, image position is, is at beyond 2 f and relative size is here in this case, we are getting enlarged image, nature of the image is real and inverted. In all the cases, we are getting real and inverted image. I am showing you again. See, this is how image is going to be formed when the object is placed between 2 f 1 and f 1. What happens if you are going to place the object at principal focus that is at f 1? If you are going to place the object at f 1, we are going to get the refracted rays like this. So, this ray diagram indicates the image position is at infinity, the relative size is highly enlarged and the nature of the image is real and inverted. Just recall the points again by seeing the animation. Here in this case, uh, a real image is going to be formed, enlarged image is going to be formed. Now, what happens if you place the object between f 1 and o that is between principal focus and optic center? the image is going to be formed like this. Here in this case, image is going to be formed on the same side of the object and here in this case, image is enlarged, that is we are going to get magnified image. See, that is what we have listed here. Image position is on the same side of the object, relative size is enlarged and the nature of the image is virtual and direct. I am showing you animation again. Practice all this ray diagram and they are very important for the point of examination also. While drawing the ray diagram, so just recall nature, size as well as the position of the image. My dear students, you have learnt how the image is going to be formed when the object is placed from different distances in front of the convex lens 
and I will give you an activity and you have to complete the table with respect to the nature of the image which is going to be formed when the object is placed at different distances. Now, just recall, remember what you have learned now and try to fill the table or try to complete the table for the first line when the object is placed at infinity, the position of the image is at f 2, then relative size of the image is highly diminished and nature of the image is real and inverted. And when the object is placed beyond 2 f 1, then what will be the position of the image? Yes, you are correct, it is between f 2 and 2 f 2, the relative size of the image is diminished and nature of the image is real and inverted. Then can you tell me nature of the image when the object is placed at 2 f 1? Yes, when the object is placed at 2 f 1, image is also formed at 2 f 2, then what about the relative size? It is as same as the object size, then nature of the image here is here also in this case real and inverted. Then what about when the object is placed between f 1 and 2 f 1? Then it is easy to remember. If the image is going to be formed beyond 2 f 2, the image is enlarged and nature of the image is real and inverted. When the object is placed at principal focus that is at focus f 1, the image position is at infinity, then relative size is in, uh, infinitely large image is going to be formed, the nature of the image is real and inverted. Then what happens when the object is going to be placed between f 1 as well as O that is optic center, then the image is going to be formed at the same size of the lens, then image is enlarged, only in this case you are getting virtual as well as erect image. My dears, I hope you understood all these things very well. Now, let us learn the nature and position as well as the relative size of the image formed by the concave lens. In case of concave lens, we are going to place the object at infinity. When the object is going to be placed at infinity, then the ray of light after the refraction, they are going to be diverged. If you are going to draw the diverged rays back, they are going to meet at principal focus. So, that is here you are getting very small image the image size is very small and the virtual image is going to be formed. When the object is placed between infinity and the optic center O of the concave lens, here also you can notice the uh, smaller sized image is going to be formed and it is erect image and it is also a virtual image we can notice there. So, that is why concave lens always produce virtual image. A convex lens, they produce both real as well as virtual image, it is depending upon the position of the object. Now, let us learn much more interesting facts about the spherical lenses, that is sign convention for the spherical lenses. According to the sign convention, the focal length of convex lens is represented by positive sign, that of concave lens is represented by negative sign. If it is, uh, if the lens is uh, marked with a positive sign, then definitely it is a convex lens and if it is named with a negative sign, so definitely it will be a concave lens. Now, let us learn the sign convention for the concave as well as convex lens. So, for that we have to remember the coordinate plane what you have learnt in the ninth standard. So, here in this case you are noticing the x axis as well as y axis, the positive side of the x axis and negative side of the x axis. Similarly, uh, positive side of the y axis and negative side of the y axis. Imagine the, we are placing a convex lens at the origin and at the center of the coordinate plane, then just remember the meaning of f 1 and 2 f 1 and f 2 and 2 f 2 and always we are going to place the object like this the object is pointing towards y axis. So, that is why 
the height of the object is going to be uh, taken as uh, positive. You are seeing the position of the object. The object is on x axis that is negative side of the x axis. That is why the object distance is going to be written with negative sign since it is on x axis that is negative part of the x axis. You know that after refraction the image is going to be formed uh, at the other side of the lens. Here in this case the image position is going to be uh, in a scene on positive side of the x axis that is why the image distance is going to be written with positive sign, but see the height of the object it is towards negative part of the y axis that is why height of the image is going to be written with negative sign. So, here height of the object is positive in this case height of the image is negative. Then distance of the uh, object is going to be written with negative sign and distance of the image is going to be written with positive signs because of their position on the x axis. So, like this if you are going to consolidate all these things we will get this tabular column and it is very easy to solve the problems based on convex lens as well as concave lens. Uh, in case of convex lens object distance u is represented with negative sign, image distance is going to be written with positive sign, height of the object is going to be written with positive sign, height of the image is going to be written with negative sign. Similarly, in case of concave lens object distance is going to be written as negative and image distance is going to be written as negative and height of the object is positive and height of the image is positive. So, you have to understand this table with respect to the coordinate plane. So, this will be helpful to you people to solve the problems on convex lens as well as concave lens. Now, we are at the end of the session. Uh, let us know about lens formula as well as the magnification. Here 1 over f is equal to 1 over v minus 1 over u will be the lens formula. Here f indicate focal length, v indicate image distance and u indicate object distance. And magnification is going to be uh, calculated by taking the ratio of height of the image to the height of the object. So, that is h i indicates the height of the image and h o indicates height of the object. And we also get the magnification by taking the ratio of image distance to the object distance. These are what the uh, today's important topics and let us recapitulate what we have learned in this session. My dears, you have a quiz, you have to read the question and I will give you four options among four you have to choose the right answer and here you have a first question. When the object is placed at infinite distance from the convex lens the image is formed at the four options for this question are a at 2 f 2, b between f 2 and o, c beyond 2 f 2, d at f 2. Can you tell me the answer for this question? Have you marked the answer? Then verify your answer. The answer for this question is d at f 2. When the object is placed at infinite distance, the image is going to be formed at f 2 that is at principal focus. Now, here you have the second question. In order to obtain the size of the image is as same as the object, the object should be placed at option for this question are a beyond 2 f 1, b at 2 f 1, c at f 1, d between f 1 and f 2. Then what is the answer for this question? Yes, you are choose the correct answer and the answer for this question is it is b at 2 f 1. The next question is in order to obtain the enlarged image of the object, the position of the object in front of the convex lens is the four options for this question are a at optic center, b between o and f 1, c at 2 f 1, d at infinity. Then 
answer for this question is it is B between O and F 1. Then you have another question. The question is in order to obtain virtual and erect image from the convex lens, the object has to be placed at the four options for this question are A beyond 2 F 1, B between O and F 1, C at 2 F 1, D between 2 F 1 and F 1. Yes, what is your answer? Yes, answer is B between O and F 1. The next question is the best transparent material among the following to read a very small letter is. The four options for this question are A convex lens, B concave mirror, C convex lens, D convex mirror. The answer for this question is A convex lens. My dear student, I hope you all enjoyed the quiz session. Now you have home assignment based on the concept you have learnt in this session and you have to write the answer for these questions and you have to show to the teachers. The first question is write the nature of the image formed by the concave lens when the object is placed at infinity. The next question is, is the concave lens and convex lens give the same magnification? Justify your answer. The next question is, which kind of lens you prefer to construct a telescope and why? And the next question is, which type of lens is used by watch repairer and why? And the next question is, observe the figure given below, write the position, size and nature of the image. These are the question for the home assignment and here you have a activity, construct a small projector at your home by using convex lens and a mobile phone. Here I am showing you image, the method of construction of the a simple projector. Here it is a convex lens and if behind that if you are going to place the mobile, the image is going to be projected on the wall. Try yourself and do it and know it. My dear student, I hope you enjoyed the session and you understood the learning concepts of today's session and thanks for your active participation in the class. Let us meet on the next session. Till then, have a nice time. Thank you.